Hello, hello, Facebook world. Happy Monday and welcome into our BN Sports Studios for Sportsverse. I am Gabrielle Amato. This is Phil Shane, the voice of our La Liga coverage. I guess you can tell who went to Starbucks this morning. I did. I, did. <laughs> I go to Starbucks every morning. Do we need to get you a cafecito? Oh, I think we probably need some intravenous. So. <laughs> But what a weekend it was, Phil. Unbelievable. And some fans are happier than others, I think. Just a little bit, especially Sevilla fans. I mean, it's been a while since they've been up at the top, and they deserve it right now because when you look at what's going on at the big two or three, there have been some problems. Unbelievable La Liga season is in store, but we're going to go through the two big teams, Real Madrid and Barcelona, who are both a bit in crisis. We're going to chat about who's in the bigger crisis between the two. And then we're going to talk Crisis City. We're going to give tickets in or out of <laughs> Crisis City. We're going to talk Bayern. We're going to talk Manchester United. Arsenal? Because I think someone's a certain Arsenal well, fan. Well, that could be. And then we'll touch on MLS too. Right here on Sports First. That starts now. have not won in four games. Not only have they not won, they have not scored a single goal. A little bit of a crisis and everyone is pointing fingers at Julen Lopetegui. So much so that the media have actually started working on his replacement already. And who are they thinking about? Antonio Conte. But before we start talking about replacements, let's start talking about the problem. What is going on at Real Madrid, Phil Shane? Well, you take a look at what's going on, and it's a team that got off to a very good start. Uh, in fact, everyone was saying, who needs Zidane? Who needs Cristiano? And then all of a sudden, reality struck. Um, a, a similar story as well, perhaps for Barcelona in some ways, because you're talking about teams that have these superstars. Many of them were playing in the World Cup this summer. They didn't really have a chance to, to relax. I know Christian Vieri talks about this a lot. It'll probably come up on the locker room later today. Uh, the fact that these players need time to regroup, uh, but they're not getting it. That was not an argument for Benzema. He hasn't played for France in years because of the certain legal issues. And he got off to a great start. But then for whatever reason, maybe Bale getting hurt, Asensio uh, getting a little bit tired, Lopetegui starting to realize there's more to this than just saying go. Things started to cool off and now they're ice cold. And, and ice cold, and the thing is, they're not. it's not even necessarily that they're not winning. They're just not scoring, which was the big question mark once mm -hmm. Cristiano Ronaldo left, who was going to fill in his, his, his place. And I don't think they found their replacement quite yet. Well, it's a little deceptive. And I know Sergio Ramos said this, and maybe it was taken a little out of context, but factually it was correct. The last two seasons when Real Madrid got out of the gate, Cristiano Ronaldo was still stuck in the starting gate, at least until Correct. December last Correct. year. Uh, so it, it, the goals were coming from elsewhere. However, with Cristiano, the defense had to keep an eye on him. Uh, if he went one, two, sometimes three defenders might go with him, which made it a little bit easier for some of the others. Uh, you talk about depth, and I know we're going to talk about Barcelona in just a little bit, but we in are. my mind, from a playing perspective, a player perspective, Real Madrid's in much better shape. But it's Lopetegui trying to get that Midas touch that Zinedine Zidane had. Uh, he's stuck with Sergio Ramos, who was exhausted after the World Cup uh, and starts a little slow to begin with. He's stuck with Karim Benzema, uh, I think, to a fault, especially when they went out and got Mariano back in the mix. Uh, they have Asensio. They have Mariano. They have Gareth Bale. They, they can find a way to fit those four into various formations and maybe take some of the pressure off. They did not do that. And now they uh, are facing. They're paying for it. Absolutely, they're so, facing difficult situations. So the the rest of their month looks pretty easy. Their next two matches versus Levante, then a Champions League matchup before mm -hmm. El Clasico. Now a lot of people are saying that uh, Real Madrid will give Lopetegui until El Clasico as a job security type thing. But if not, a lot of word about a possible Antonio Conte stepping in. Do you see this as a fit at all? Um, not really. I mean, we're yeah, talking no, about a guy that uh, comes in and he is one that. Forget about breaking eggs. I mean, he's throwing the shells in with the omelet. Uh, and you look at Carlo Ancelotti, you could see how that would come into a situation to calm the waters. Now, this is not Jose Mourinho poking people in the eye with Lopetegui, but it is a bunch of superstars that are, have kind of lost their way. And you need someone to cajole them, to caress them back into form. That's not Conte style. No, he's not a, a yeah. lovey-dovey <laughs> type of manager whatsoever. But you kind of touched on this, and a lot of people asking, who does have it worse, Real Madrid or Barcelona? So now we'll touch on the Barcelona side. This is the worst Barcelona at this stage of the competition in 13 seasons. What is Valverde doing wrong? Well, in some ways, he's playing to his strength. 
which is what Barcelona, I think, was looking for. You had Pep Guardiola, you had Tito, Tata, uh, and Luis Enrique, and uh, through one form or another, they were all aggressive gambling coaches. And especially when you had guys uh, going to the beginning, Xavi and Iniesta and Messi and Busquets, and all of them, including Dani Alves, who I don't think they've ever really replaced, no. were younger and heading into their prime. You could afford to basically roll the dice. And sometimes, I guess, it's, it's the calendar that Valverde is dealing with, plus also he is a more cautious manager. Take a look at Athletic Bilbao, go to Olympiacos. Uh, this is a guy that builds through the defense, does not want to risk dropping points rather than, rather than maybe rolling the dice to try and win some. And I think that's one of the reasons we've seen so many draws to this point of the season. Uh, in regards to the question as to who is in deeper trouble, I would say that Barcelona, as things are, is probably in better shape to win things, but in a more precarious shape as well. If Messi goes down, if Busquets goes down, right. if Jordi Alba goes down, we're on Real Madrid. Um, you could argue maybe Nacho is no Marcelo, but Nacho still gets the job done. Uh, you, we talked about bringing in Mariano. Uh, they have Navas behind Courtois. I mean, I think all of the pieces of the puzzle are there. Lopetegui is still trying to figure out where they go. For Valverde, he's just trying to make sure that the puzzle stays in shape. So let's hit the comments here. Shago Bakar saying, can we talk about Barcelona not winning in La Liga? Well, we did touch on that. There's, they are still really yeah. well placed on the table, to be honest. And this is from point ahead. Joe Burton as well, talking about Real struggles coinciding with Isco's absence, someone I didn't mention, and I think that's dead on. And I think that's also one of the reasons that the Aiden Hazard rumors continue, uh, because you look at Modric, and I know he was FIFA's best. I know there's a lot of Real Madrid fans who love him. Uh, I know he was huge for Croatia, along with Rakitic, to get where they were. But I take a look at that Real Madrid midfield, and I think he's third or fourth in the pecking order. Casemiro, irreplaceable. You look at Toni Kroos, no one does what he does better. And I think Isco is the guy that puts the key in the lock for someone else to turn. For Modric, he's just that cog that keeps the machine flowing, and right now it's sputtering. And you you talked about possible World Cup fatigue. I don't think anyone's more tired than Luka Modric and Croatians who played extra time, countless, countless Good times. Good point, an extra game in any Correct. Anyway. And um, Asensio, who was able to step up for Isco during Isco's absence, has not really done what I think a lot of people wanted him to do. Would well, you they, agree? Were, they were kind of hoping, uh, and he did create. I mean, he had the goal. He created, what, three penalties, the I think, winning. which is still more than anyone else in the Big Five in Europe. So he's getting into those positions. But there is a, a confidence that is going to be in question. And uh, a lot was made of Mariano wearing the number seven for Cristiano Ronaldo. The reason he is is because they offered it to Asensio, and Asensio said no. He did not want that added burden. And in some ways, I think that shows to the personality. He doesn't quite feel he's ready for that yet. Which is huge that Mariano feels that he is ready to take that number. Ryan Moran saying Ramos actually said something correct. They went through a drought with Ronaldo as well. In fact, Ra Ronaldo in La Liga didn't score a single goal outside the box last season. They need more firepower. And he only had four goals into, into January last correct. year. Correct. There was that goal-scoring drought at the beginning of the season, but the goals did eventually come. And so who do you think Real Madrid should turn to for those goals to eventually come? Well, and at this point, it's sputtering. It's trying to get the car moving again, which would have been a lot easier if... Uh, uh, if Lopetegui would not have, I guess, put all of the weight on Karim Benzema's back. Uh, I, again, I think you have to get Mariano in there, get him a couple of starts, maybe in succession, bring Benzema off the bench for a couple of, uh, of half-hour marks. Although, if you look at statistically last year, that was one of the situations uh, with Morata, is the fact that Benzema produces so much better as a starter than off the bench. Correct. Uh, but maybe half and half somehow. you got to get Mariano involved. You need to get Asensio's confidence back to the point where he's taking shots. He's trying. And with Gareth Bale, it's velvet gloves because it. you need him, but you can't push him because... This is what happens. Oh, he absolutely. Gets injured. Was it two years ago? I think he missed half the season practically. Last year, oh, about a quarter of the season. This year, it's only been parts of games, but they need him healthy. He's missed 58 matches in the past three seasons for Real Madrid, so you do have to be careful with him. And Barcelona, who we touched on, do not have an easy October. They play Sevilla next, then mm -hmm. they play Inter in the Champions League, and then Real Madrid. So this is not an easy calendar for Barcelona oh, it is not. either. And again, you take a look at that Sevilla match. It was expected yes. to be a tough match leading into Champions League and Inter then the Real Madrid. And you look at these three right now, the Sevilla match might be the toughest one of the three. Absolutely. Uh, this is the team that's topping the league right now, and deservedly so. I love Machina at Girona and what he's done. Because last year, if I recall, I picked Sevilla to finish fourth. Uh, but there were so many coaching issues that, and dissent that they slipped just a little. They still have that talent. They have added to it tremendously Andres with the likes Silva's. of Silva. Uh, and now they have Machine, who's given them that spark and that spine. Uh, this is a team to watch out for. I'm not going to say they're going to finish first, 
but I would not be surprised to see them challenge for a top three spot and definitely a Champions League spot. Love to see it. So the time has come to travel to Crisis City. Mm. So we're going to assess. Buckle up. Yes, we're going to assess these application clubs who are accepted or denied entry into Crisis City, beginning with Bayern Munich. Um, they are absolutely Yikes. in Crisis City. And uh, you look at Kovac right now talking about coaches on the hot seat. He's probably uh, the hottest right now, very close to nuclear. This is a, a Bayern squad where they are pointing fingers, and it's all in direction of the manager. Ham is coming out publicly and, and pointing the finger, saying, this is an Eintracht Frankfurt. This is Bayern. We're expecting to do more. You can understand why Hamas was upset. He doesn't play against Augsburg. He's on the bench against Ajax. Uh, so... You can understand that, but any time that the players, the superstars, the leaders start pointing fingers at Bayern, it does not go well. Just ask Jurgen Klinsmann, just ask Carlo Ancelotti. Ask um, Mourinho. Oh, absolutely. This is white smoke coming out of the, the Bayern chimney. Which we'll move on to next. Manchester United, are you accepting or denying their entry into Crisis City? I would say that right now they're at the gate, ticket in hand. Okay. I, I would have said that they might have actually been going through security until this past week. But what Jose Mourinho did, it did and this is something I know you can appreciate, uh, going all the way back. He knows a way to draw attention to himself. And he's done it so many times for the positive, recently maybe to the negative. But what he's done right now is he's almost created an us versus them again inside the clubhouse to the upper reaches of Manchester United's board. And he's saying to the fans, support the players, support the team, support me. It's all their fault. And I think some of that happened. Now you also have a, a decent result. They're not playing brilliantly. Uh, you still have to find a way to get Pogba and Sanchez consistently involved. But with the fact that Martial and Sanchez both found the net this past weekend, maybe a step in the right direction. And an unbelievable showing. I was kind of surprised that his, this showed that his players are still playing for him. I mean, you're down 2-0 at the locker, mm -hmm. at the half. And then they come back to rally a 3-2 victory at Old Trafford. The announcers had said that they had not heard Old Trafford as loud as it had been this past weekend all season long. Well, I don't know if they're playing for him, but he's found a way to push the buttons to get them at least playing for themselves. themselves. And that was the one Good thing point. a lot of the, the stars have pointed out. Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, etc. The fact that I don't care if you like Mourinho. I don't care if you like Ed Woodward. I don't care if you like the Glazers. Um, you still when have you, the shirt on. When you put that shirt on, it means something for what they've done over the past uh, half century plus. And the likes of Alexis Sanchez, the fact that he was able to score the winner is huge. That's something for him and Mourinho to build on. So, again, it is only one game away from being in Crisis City. So I'm not quite sure which direction Taking they're headed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Next up, your arsenal. Mm -hmm. I think that they're not in they, Now, our producer Tim said that they have a lifetime ticket into Crisis City, and I think that was a little That's cheeky comment. That's just his Ipswich past. But not, exactly. He's an Ipswich Town fan. But nine wins in a row, unbelievable streak. I don't think they're in Crisis City at oh, all. Oh, not at all. And I know a lot of people were ready to throw Unai Emery overboard after the first two games of the season, which they were losses against Manchester City. City and Chelsea, I was on the locker room. People were in disbelief when I'm saying, I'm happy. Yeah. Because when you watch the way that they played, what they were trying to do, what they were able to do, and then you figured out where the weaknesses were. It's Peter Cech getting used to a system that he has never played. It's two center backs who, in my mind, are international class but have never played together. Those are things I think that you can adapt to. They had injury issues at left back as well. So uh, what they were trying to do offensively was brilliant, and now we've seen it over the next nine games. I know we have uh, the B and Best coming up a little bit later on extra. We do. I was so tempted to put Arsenal in the top ten, but I'm going to hold off just for the simple fact that of these nine games, there's no huge games in there. But what they've done is they've built some momentum, they've built some confidence, and this match uh, at the Cottage this past weekend, they were favorites, they were heavy favorites coming in, but through Arsene Wenger's last few years, those were the matches where they would have dropped points or maybe squeaked out a win. The fact that they were able to go in 1-1 at the half and put four on the board uh, with maybe a goal of the season from Ramsey and two off the bench I'm from Obama Young. Uh, this is a good sign for the future. Now it's up to an IMRE to keep it going. Do you know which club is going to end your win streak? Would you have a certain team in mind? I do. It's going to be Sporting yeah, in the Europa feeling, League. Yeah. My team versus Phil's team. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to place a little bet on that. Just and a touch. You know, hey, it's, it's, it's not the uh, Primera. So it, maybe they have a chance. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll talk. We'll talk next week. And last but not least, San Jose. You wanted to touch on a little situation in MLS. Well, with the playoff season drawing... Uh, closer, the end of the season drawing to a close, and San Jose out of the picture. Really, the only thing that was left was to find out what Steve Ralston could get out of him, if Chris Wondolowski could beat Landon Donovan's record. He's one goal away from tying it. 
Something popped last night that yes. is huge. And this is almost Tata Martino huge with what Atlanta was able to do. It's the fact that they're looking at Matias Almeida, Bobo Vieri's old teammate at Lazio and Inter, who was the manager that got River Plate back into the top flight in Argentina, was the manager at Chivas, and was one of the top two or three contenders for the Mexican national team job. San Jose is going to announce him today, if you believe a lot of the reports, as their new manager for next year. Now, it's an opportunity. This is a guy who's aggressive. It's a guy that likes to play attacking soccer. We saw in the Champions League in CONCACAF, even with a bad Chivas team, what he was able he to well. do. Uh, they need to give him players. Maybe even a Giovanni Dos Santos, move him out of Los Angeles, okay. bring some other people from Mexico and Europe and Argentina and the like. But this is a talismanic manager, just like Tata Martino is in Atlanta. And it's a sign that San Jose is taking this seriously. And a sign that a great addition for MLS. So a, a big pickup for the, the uh, league there. So tonight on the Extra, 7 p.m. Eastern time, you kind of gave a little hint. We're mm -hmm. going to do Bean's best, so we'll rank the top 10 teams in the world. A little bit of drama there. And just then you're on the locker room at 7.30 p.m. Locker room as well. And and uh, we're going to be talking about many of these very same things, Real Madrid and Barca. Uh, what did Zidane have that Lopetegui doesn't, and can he get it? Boom. Well, you won't want to miss those. That's it for Sports First for today. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, leave me hanging. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I thought you were saying bye. Let's do it again.